Obtaining cultures are essential when a patient is suspected of having a bacterial or fungal infection. Cultures can help clinicians identify the offending organism and tailor an effective antibiotic regimen. Whenever possible, cultures should be obtained first before administering antibiotics. Once the culture has been collected and sent to the laboratory, the very first thing which will be done is gram staining the microorganism. Gram staining is a diagnostic test which gives an early indication of potential bacteria through visualization of the bacteria. The gram stain helps to differentiate the organism into two groups, gram positive and gram negative. Gram positive bacteria absorb the gram stain and appear purple in color. Gram negative bacteria do not absorb the stain and appear pink in color. In addition, the shape, arrangement, and size of the organism can provide further information to identify the bacteria. Common shapes seen on the gram stain include cocci, which resemble spheres, bacilli, which resemble rods, and cocobacilli, which are a combination of the two. Depending on the speed of the laboratory, gram stain, and microscope observations are often available within hours of sending the culture to the laboratory. When a person first arrives at the hospital with an infection, multiple broad-spectrum antibiotics are given. Usually, one antibiotic is given which kills gram-negative bacteria, and one antibiotic is given which kills gram-positive bacteria. As soon as the bacteria is known to be gram-positive or gram-negative, the antibiotics can be de-escalated. For example, if the organism tested is gram-negative, the antibiotic, which kills gram-positive bacteria, can be eliminated. Using the information gained from gram staining and microscope examination, the laboratory technician will plate the bacteria on different types of auger or in various solutions to identify the bacteria. The process of identifying the organism can take up to five days. Once the bacteria is identified, it is then tested against various antibiotics. For each antibiotic tested, a minimum inhibitory concentration, or MIC, is reported. The MIC is the lowest concentration of antibiotic needed to inhibit the growth of an organism. For each antibiotic, there is a breakpoint. This is the concentration of the antibiotic which has been shown to be effective against the bacteria. Breakpoints are set in the United States by the Food and Drug Administration, or FDA. The breakpoint is then compared to the MIC and is given the rating of susceptible, intermediate, or resistant. In short, breakpoints are standard values which do not change. MICs vary and are specific to each patient and to each infection. To better understand this, let me give you three examples. Example number one. Let's say the pathogen identified is Pseudomonas. Tobermycin is tested against this strain of Pseudomonas. The MIC is 2. The breakpoint for Tobermycin against Pseudomonas is 8. Since the MIC of 2 is less than the breakpoint of 8, Pseudomonas is reported as being sensitive to Tobermycin. If you give the patient Tobermycin for a Pseudomonas infection, the Tobermycin will be effective against the Pseudomonas. Example number 2. Using the same bacteria, Pseudomonas, and the same antibiotic, Tobermycin, let's say in another patient, the MIC of Tobermycin against Pseudomonas was reported to be 8. Comparing it to the breakpoint for Tobermycin, which is 8, the MIC would be reported as intermediate. This means that the MIC is at the same level as the breakpoint. If you give the patient tobermycin for a pseudomonas infection, the tobermycin will be effective against the pseudomonas. Example number three, using the same bacteria, pseudomonas, and the same antibiotic, tobermycin, let's say in another patient, the MIC of tobermycin was reported to be 32. Looking at the breakpoint for tobermycin, which is 8, the MIC would be reported as resistant. If you give the patient tobermycin for a pseudomonas infection, the tobermycin will not be effective against the pseudomonas. 
Reports vary slightly from hospital to hospital, but in general, they will have the following information. It will report the source of the culture collected. For example, was it from urine, blood, sputum, etc. Next, it will list where in the body the culture was taken from. Also, it will list if a bacteria or fungus was identified. There may be more than one organism listed. Some reports will also have a number next to the pathogen. For example, in this report, it is noted as 1 plus Pseudomonas aeruginosa. The number represents how much of the organism grew. A 1 plus means very little of the organism grew on the culture media. A 2 plus means few organisms grew on the culture media. A 3 plus means a moderate amount of organism grew on the culture media. And a 4 plus means many of the organism grew on the culture media. For each organism identified, there will be a list of antibiotics which were tested against it. The minimum inhibitory concentration, or MIC, is reported along with the interpretation of the MIC. The interpretation will be given as S, I, or R, which stands for susceptible, intermediate, and resistant. The report does not tell the clinician which antibiotic to use. It merely gives the provider data which he must interpret and use his judgment on which medicine to utilize. Culture and sensitivity reports identify the bacteria or fungus present most of the time. Culture and sensitivity reports do not identify an infection. They only report if a microorganism is present. The organism may be causing an infection or it could be the normal bacteria found in the tissue, or it could be contamination of the culture. They also do not tell a clinician which antibiotic to use. Thank you so much for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe down below. I hope you have a great day and a wonderful week. Bye-bye.